Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I am very excited because my new scratch built loco is finally finished and I'm ready to reveal it to you for the first time. So the Loco is of course the Great Eastern 552-060 tender engine and this project has taken an incredibly long time and that's because I've been working on quite a lot of other projects at the same time. I haven't been able to dedicate all of my time to this project so this one's taken longer than any others, around four months, which is obviously a long time but I enjoy this process so for me it's actually quite nice that it's taken a little bit longer and it's also given me a little bit more time to think when I've been doing other things thinking about how to make things better and how to improve things so perhaps it's not so bad anyway here is the locomotive in its finished state not 100% happy with this loco as always there are things that I see that I could improve on this the lining for instance didn't come out quite as well on the loco as it did on the tender so I've still got some work to do to improve it but overall everything seems to have gone together quite nicely and it does look like the Great Eastern 552 if I show you one of the photos which is all I could really ask for. As you can see, I did finish this off in the Great Eastern Blue livery, and as I said back in the first video about this, how appropriate that livery is for this loco is a little bit questionable, but hey, it's my loco, that's what I wanted to do, so I did it, and now I have a Great Eastern loco in my collection in Great Eastern livery, which is something that I've always wanted, and now I have. Let's do a bit of a price breakdown then. Here you can see all of the different components that I've had to pay for. We've got the 8F wheels, that's what the driving wheels on this loco are based on, 4 dollars on hornby.com. I used some Grange tender wheels, I think I did, anyway I forget now because it was so long ago since I selected them, but again on hornby.com those were around £1.99. The motor itself of course £8.50, that's the biggest expenditure. Around 15 screws, I counted them up, I think there's 15, that comes out to about 20 pence. One sheet of transfer paper, that's for the lining and the decals and such, approximately two pounds for that. A pack of crank pins, I've used six of them, of course, as an 060, that's four pounds 50. Some weights in the boiler, just two of those weights this time, which comes out at approximately 50 pence. Paints, I did not have to buy any new paints for this project at all. It used paints that I already had in stock, so approximately two pounds worth of paint used. That's possibly a little bit generous. And approximately 100 grams of PLA plastic, which cost two pounds. So the grand total for this locomotive, assuming I haven't forgotten anything, is 26 pounds 68 pence not too bad at all. Now of course that doesn't include the hours that I put into building and painting and designing the thing but in terms of raw materials that's what it cost and I'm pretty happy with that. This complete locomotive cost around one tenth of what it would have cost if I'd purchased it from a manufacturer which I can't anyway because none of them make it so overall a pretty good deal I think. Anyway, today I'm going to talk all about this loco, I'm going to show you it up close, warts and all, I'm going to talk about what I like about this thing, what went well, and also what I don't like so much, what didn't go quite as well, and what I'm going to try to improve for next time. Then of course we'll talk about the mechanism, I'll show you how it runs, and we'll get it going with some rolling stock. So, fun video hopefully, let's get started. First then, let's have a little bit of background on the real locomotive. So, the Great Eastern 552 class was introduced in 1882 for general goods work. The first to be built was this example, number 552, and they weighed in at 36 tonnes each, and 10 of them were built in total by Kitson and Company, and they were notable for their raised footplate, which exposed the wheels almost completely. This differed from other similar later designs, such as the Y14 or the J15, which is very similar to this loco, not the same, but a kind of successor to this design, if you like. And those locos obviously had the footplate covering the tops of the wheels, whereas on this loco they were completely exposed. And I believe the J15s had a smaller diameter wheel as well. 
The 552 class was rebuilt in 1893, although this process resulted in very few external changes. They had new boilers, I believe, and new cylinders. The class was then supposedly withdrawn sometime between 1904 and 1906, and if that's true, that would mean that the engines never would have appeared in anything other than Great Eastern liveries. So that means no LNER and no British Railways livery. So there it is, my homemade Great Eastern 552 up close and personal for you. And interestingly this time, everything you see here on the Loco is not everything that was created for this project. And that's because I built loads and loads of tools to aid in the creation of this Loco. And I want to show you some of these tools. These are the tools that were used for gauging and assembling the wheel sets and also making sure that the quartering was correct. I've got tools here that were used for holding the various parts while I put them together. This part, for instance, was designed to hold the loco body so that it could be assembled and painted. Very, very handy tools, couldn't do without those. And then there's rather a lot of tools which are also designed for painting the loco. So we've got a tool here for painting the lining onto the lower tender. We've got tools here for painting the wheels of the loco, tools here for painting the sides of the tender, all sorts of different tools, tool there for doing the gauges inside the cab a tool here for painting the nameplates, loads and loads of tools. And even though this is annoying to have to create all of this just to create this, they make the process of creating a loco much, much easier. And ultimately they make the painting a little bit neater as well. All right, let me give you the tour then. Now, obviously this is a 3D printed loco. Filming it ultra close up in 4K is quite cruel and it's always going to look a lot worse up close than it does from a distance. But like I say, I'm not gonna hide anything from you. Let's get started. We'll start with the loco and we'll start at the bottom with the wheels. Now I say I've used Hornby 8F wheels. It's only the metal tires that are Hornby. The centers obviously are designed by me and created by me. A Little bit chunkier than I think they would be if they were professionally manufactured, but they do at least match the structure of the real 552 wheels. Also, obviously the painting process that I've used to decorate these wheels is nowhere near as sophisticated as you would find from Hornby and Backman and whatnot. So it's not 100% neat and tidy or anything, but each time I build a new loco, things are getting a little bit more sophisticated in that area. You've got the coupling rod, which I love the way this looks. Yeah, painted with the sort of chrome sections and the red sections in the middle. That's all just done by masking. And then you've got a chassis, which is relatively well detailed. You can see we've got some molded in inverted commas detailing on the chassis. And also this area where you can see right through, that's as it was on the real thing. And I was pleased to be able to replicate that. And there's also the separately fitted brake pads on the lower chassis as well. In terms of the buffer beam, I've got a screw link coupling. This I did not create myself. I found this in my parts bin. Maybe it should have been a three link on this loco thinking about it, but this is what I had and I fancied it. And I think it looks pretty good. It's also got the 3D printed guard irons on there and the buffers, which are made of two parts each. You've got the housing and the buffer itself. Not sprung, of course, but I'm thinking of ways to do that. And then above there, for the first time, I've done separately fitted lamp brackets. I think they look pretty good, actually. I'm pleased with those. And then you've got the painted smoke box door, which has the hinges painted and then the handle separately fitted. You've got the little steps on the running plates. This is a very, very small part, not 100% perfect, but again, I wanted to include it on here. And then of course, you've got the Great Eastern blue of the boiler with the gold banding at the front. Yeah, this lining didn't work out ever so well. I think because I'm putting this lining onto such a dark color for the first time, the red in this lining didn't show up too well. So I will have to adapt that next time. But on the tender, I did manage to figure that out. And as you can see, that looks a lot better. In terms of the detailing along the side of the loco, you've got these levers. I used to think this was pipe work, but I think they might actually be levers. Could be wrong though. Then you've got the little valves on the side of the boiler. Would you say those are clack valves? Not too sure. The pipework coming off those is painted 3D printed plastic. Those are not real copper this time because I wanted more control over the dimensions. And then on the other side, you've got an extra valve on the side of the smoke box as well as the reverser rod. 
Now, the handrails across the boiler. Again, these are 3D printed. Now, every time I do this, there are some people who say, oh, you need to be using wire handrails, and they seem to get quite upset that I'm 3D printing them. Well, I disagree on the wire handrails, frankly. I think everybody builds models the way they think is best, and I think the wire handrails with the chunky holders are a little bit too cumbersome for a loco of this size. Looking at the real things, I think the fine nature of these 3D printed handrails is a lot closer to the dimensions of the actual handrails. So I've 3D printed them, although like I say, you build models in the way that you think is best. So if you disagree with the 3D printed handrails, obviously you're going to want to put wire ones in instead. Up on top, you've got even more pipe work connecting the boiler and the smoke box. You've got the dome, which is obviously a separately fitted part. Fair bit of pipe work connected to the whistle and then the safety valve assembly, which I'm really pleased with. I think that looks pretty good. And then you've got the cab windows, which are glazed. As you can see, we've got a little bit of glazing on those. And also the outer windows have the brassy colored frames, which is something I wanted to include. On the side of the cab, you've got the 552 number plates, which are separately fitted and the detailing on those plates is transferred on homemade transfers so a little bit pixelated up close but when viewing normally they're not too bad and then you've got the cab detail now unfortunately none of the photos i have of 552 show the cab so the cab here is a little bit of guesswork and it also looks at some other great eastern locos the j15 or y14 that's another one so not completely realistic or anything but i am pleased with the way all of this came out all hand painted this time and you've got a few separate parts as well such as the reverser wheel maybe that should be a lever not too sure couldn't find a picture and also the regulator which is still a separately fitted 3d printed part then you've got the tender which like i say i think looks a little bit better because the transfers have worked better here i reckon my technique was better You've also got the underframe, which has the separately fitted axle boxes and springs, and then the lower chassis, which is lined, as you can also tell. This lining was not done with transfers, this is paint, so again, up close, you can see that it's not 100% neat and tidy, but it is the best I could do. You've got a brake handle and some separately fitted handrails on the front of the tender. You've got the separately fitted coal load in the top and a bit of it pokes through the hatch as you can see where the fireman would be able to shovel it. Quite a bit of detail on the top of the tender and then around the back there's a little plate which has been incorporated into the transfer and then the buffer beam has a hole for a screw link or chain link coupling if that's what you want to fit but I've just left that blank because I've got a NEM coupling fitted into there. And then there are more guard irons and buffers separately fitted onto there as well. So in terms of what went well, I think the colour matching is pretty good. Looking at photos of real Great Eastern locos, the colour of blue isn't far off. And I actually achieved that colour by painting the locos in pretty much the same way the real ones were painted. So you start with a very dark colour, I started with black. And then you add layers of the blue until you reach the right shade. And yeah, I think that actually worked quite nicely. What also went well was the fit and finish of all the separate parts. I think I'm quite pleased with this and I would say this is the most detailed loco I have created in terms of all the separate parts. What didn't go well was again the transfers. I'm not 100% happy with the finish of some of these transfers. I think I needed to apply a little bit less of the gloss varnish to those transfers. Yes, that made them strong but it also gave them a funny texture. I also need to print some of the lining onto white transfer paper rather than clear, particularly when those transfers are to be applied to a dark surface as with this. But overall, thoroughly enjoyed this project. I am pleased with the final result and uh, I'm kind of sad that it's over. But there's still more to talk about with this. We need to get it down onto the track. I'll show you how this runs and we'll talk a little bit about the mechanism as well. So there she is down onto the track, my new and homemade Great Eastern 552. And I'm gonna show you the performance in just a second, but first I wanna talk about the mechanism. Now the first thing to talk about here is the weight. Now this weighs in loco and tender at 113 grams, which is obviously quite light. Now this one in particular is light for a couple of reasons. First of all, obviously it is 3D printed. I don't have any way of making any part of this model die cast and therefore it is quite light. 
It's also a little bit lighter than perhaps it needed to be because of a deliberate decision I made. And that was to use a larger and better motor than I've used in the past. So the motor in 552 is this motor and the motor that went into Copper Knob and Gladstone and my other locos was this one, which is obviously much smaller. Now, this larger motor is more powerful, it should perform better at low speeds, it's got more torque, etc. But of course, it is larger and you need a larger housing for it. And so, in order to fit this larger motor into my 552, I've had to sacrifice some of the weight. The space that this motor occupies could have been used to maybe fit 10 to 15 grams worth of weights. Instead, we've just got this six gram motor. So I've sacrificed a little bit of weight for the better motor, but I hope that that will improve the performance. In terms of pickups, we've got pickups in both the Loco and the Tender. Both vehicles have four pickups, two going to each line, which gives eight pickups in total. I didn't want too many pickups, particularly on the Tender, because obviously the more you have, the more drag you've got. So I made sure that there was more than enough so that the Loco was going to perform well and reliably, but not so many so as to waste any of that very, very precious pulling power, because we've not got that much with this Loco, being that it is very light. In terms of the axles and the wheels, we've got proper turned metal bearings on the Loco driving wheels, which is a good quality feature and it reduces drag. And like I say, we've got the large coreless motor fitted to the Loco chassis. Sadly, no flywheel or anything. Again, that would have been a nice addition, but there's just not really room for that. So no flywheel, but it is a high quality coreless motor. And then for the gauge, I've tried to match what other manufacturers do. So 14.2 to 14.3 millimeters, slightly below the standard, but hey, it works well for those other locos I've got. So hopefully it will work well for this. So with all that in mind, let me show you the first performance test then. So let's find out whether it works. And clearly I've tested this, so it's not going to be too much of a surprise. But as you can see, off it goes. <laughs> so yeah, that larger motor I think was actually worth it. I might have to go back to using the smaller motor if I design a smaller loco because obviously then the weight will be more of a problem. But with this one, I think I've just about gotten away with it. Let me show you what the crawl is like because that's really what this larger motor is better at. So I'm just going to ease it up gently. There we go. And I would say I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, to say this is a, a cheap homemade 3D printed loco, I think this crawl is pretty good. Let's try forwards. I think it can go even slower than I just showed you, so let's see if I can do that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's unbelievably slow, really. Um, but that's the kind of thing I like in a loco, so that's what I've striven for here. Is that a word? I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, quite happy with it. Now, I've tried to gear the speed down as much as possible, but it is a little bit speedy. So if I do a 50% run past you, you'll see what I mean. Are you ready? Yeah, it's fast. But like I say, because that motor is such a good performer, you can still get good low speed performance out of it. So that doesn't matter too much. But yeah, it is a little bit speedy. In terms of the tractive effort, uh, because of its low weight, it's not fantastic. 0.1 newtons, which should be around 10 coaches on straight and level track. So in light of that, I'm really going easy on this mechanism. I've just got three Hatton's Genesis coaches. Again, that's not entirely accurate because this is a goods loco, but I do think the Great Eastern Blue just looks better with some coaches. So we will start with coaches, and then later on I will hook her up to some goods. Uh, maybe a few more, in fact bit of an extra haulage test later on and we'll see how she gets on with those but for now let's see if I manage to get that coupling height right in the end let's back it up and let's couple so it should be possible to do a nice precise coupling with this so let's see about that oh dear <laughs> seems like they are at the right height but um, yeah one of the hooks or maybe both didn't quite go up let's have a look yeah, they're at the right height, aren't they? I reckon it might just be a case of pushing them <laughs> or maybe coupling a little bit faster. But uh, yeah, no big deal. That seems to be okay. Right, well, let's start her off. Let's see if she can handle a relatively light load. 
Here we go. Let's see if I can accelerate these coaches gently. Here we go. Yeah, reasonably gently. Let's go for about 30 odd speed on there. That should be okay. Okay, so on the middle line, I'm going to run another loco that's very, very similar to 552, and that's kind of the cousin or sister loco, the J15, Hornby J15. And this has a bit of a goods train on it, and I'm going to let 552 couple up to this goods train a little bit later on, and we'll see how she gets on with that. So, yeah, we'll do that shortly. And then on the inside line, we've got another similar loco. This is the LNER J36. Again, I've been looking at this loco in the creation of 552 because it does share quite a few similarities. Uh, so for things like cab detail, inspiration and such, I'll have looked at this. Anyway, let's get this one going with its coaches and let's catch up with 552 and see how she gets on with a load. All right, here she goes. <laughs> it gets a little bit noisier when it starts uh, climbing the incline with a load. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's a light loco, it does struggle with the heavier loads. But with three coaches, it seems to be okay. I've got some wheel slip going on there. So it's actually not dreadfully powerful. And obviously if I had access to die casting and that sort of thing, it would be a lot more powerful, I think. But still, the fact that I've been able to create a loco from scratch and have it run and have it haul at least a bit of a load is a real thrill for me. You always feel really proud when something that you've created from scratch kind of takes to the track and works as it should. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, overall, the way it's performing, I'm really happy with. The slow speed performance is obviously very good. Um, it does seem to struggle with a load, like I say. I don't know if there's a bit of skipping in there as well. So maybe if I do this again, I will move the motor unit a little bit closer to the driving gear, possibly, just to make sure they are meshing a little bit better. But uh, yeah, for the most part, I don't have very many complaints on the pulling power. Obviously, I do wish it was heavier. Yeah, it would be nice if this loco weighed a bit more, but there's not a lot more I could have really done besides use a smaller and weaker motor, which I didn't fancy either. Right, so the J15 has now got some of the teaks and I've popped 552 on the freight train. And yeah, again, it's, uh, it's not very happy about it, but it is hauling them, as you can see. So it's not as powerful as the Hornby J15, but yeah, can haul a bit of a freight train as well. But yeah, overall, it looks okay on the track, and when you're not looking at it up close too much, I think it's a little bit more pleasing to look at as well. So there you go, the Sam's Trains 3D printed Great Eastern 552. Let me try and give you some ratings then for the 552. As always, it's hard to do this when you have built the Loco yourself because it is difficult not to be biased when it's a model that you've been working on for four months and you, you love the thing to bits. But I'm gonna try and be objective here. So the level of detail I have given three star. It loses a star for the lining, which doesn't look great in areas. And because I wasn't getting the great contrast on the boiler, I left it off of some areas such as the side of the cab. So it's a little bit down on detail there. It also doesn't have special features such as sprung buffers or lights in the firebox. But apart from that, it is relatively complex in its detailing. It's got loads of separately fitted parts and levers and a fully painted cab, etc. Yeah, I've tried to give this as much detail as possible. For performance, I've given it four star. Uh, it does lose a mark for how speedy it is, but on the plus side, it is a good crawler. It's got plenty of torque at the low speeds, even if it is a little bit sticky at times, although maybe the more it runs, that will improve. The pulling power really isn't very good for a loco of this size. If only it was a little bit heavier, I think it would be much more powerful, but as it is, 0.1 newtons or 10 coaches on straight and level track, that's only the same as the Hornby Terrier. Not a great puller, unfortunately. The mechanism, though, is four-star. It's got loads of pickups, both on the loco and the tender, proper turned metal bearings on the driving axles, good quality motor, this time much larger one. Doesn't have a flywheel or a DCC socket, though, so it does lose a star for that. The quality, as always with these 3D printed locos, is quite low. Obviously, plastic construction, I don't have any die cast on the running plate or the boiler. I would love to be able to do that, but sadly, with 3D printing like this, can't quite do that. 
There are one or two details that I think up close look a little bit messy. Again, that whistle, if this was injection molded or maybe turned metal, you'd get a lot more detail into that and it would have more finesse. Again, the paintwork is not perfect either. The transfers don't look perfect this time. And like I say, in places, the red doesn't show through properly. So yeah, I have knocked it down quite a bit on the quality. On the value though, there's plenty of room to earn back a few more points because this only cost me 26 pounds and 18 pence. Don't forget that was all purchased at consumer prices as well. So it's not like I'm getting this stuff a lot cheaper because I'm buying it in bulk. I'm just sort of buying one or two of everything here. So that's not a bad price at all. And plus I had all of the fun making it as well. I just love the whole process of creating a loco like this. And that's something you don't get if you just buy a loco off the shelf. So not only is this 10 times cheaper, it's 10 times more fun as well. So the value for me is a five star, although that is quite subjective. Overall though, there are things that let this down. So it's 6.61 out of 10 or a grade of E. Yeah, that does feel harsh. It's sad that my loco only got a grade of E. But this is up against properly manufactured professional models and clearly if I was given this 10 out of 10 and giving it an A that would just be completely wrong. So I think that is fair as harsh as it is. Maybe it wasn't harsh enough. I don't know. Comment down below and let me know. But let's put it into the logbook and oh it's not bottom it is in 11th place above the Hornby Tiger below the Triang Victorian train set. Tiger obviously better than this. But there were other aspects of the train pack which gave that a lower score. I think the value was one of them. But yeah, not looking too fantastic against professionally manufactured models, but it is a unique loco. Nobody else has got one and I really enjoyed putting it together. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining me for yet another really thoroughly enjoyable 3D printed loco project. I just love this whole process. I know I've said this before, but the whole design process, the troubleshooting, the detailing, and then the printing, painting, a lot of it's stressful, a lot of it is time consuming, but then when you can put a loco down onto the track that you've made yourself, and every aspect of it you've had full control over, there is some great satisfaction in that. And I hope you've been able to enjoy a bit of that as well through watching this process. But for now, thank you very much for watching, like I say, and I will see you very, very soon for another video. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.